Well, hi folks, this is Darren with Meyer V Works. I've been working in the rain all day and I uh, was not planning on doing a video, but I just want to do a real quick introduction to a tool that I make uh, with our T3 interface business. And it's going to be this tool right here. I'm just going to show you a real quick. So it's called the trailer brake check. Okay. I'm going to show you real quick what this thing can do. Um, let me set up the, let me set the table for you here. So this RV came to us um, with an issue with the brakes. Okay. So if you come to me with an issue with brakes on your, your RV, I've got this tool here and I've got another tool that I'm going to be making for you. It's ugly and um, I'm going to be making it prettier. So it's not quite ready for prime time like this one is. So the first thing we found on this trailer was this seven way connector had been run over and was crushed. Um, you could still actually plug it into a seven way socket on your tow vehicle, but it was, it was crushed. Okay. And uh, so let's put a new one on there. So I have a brand new, um, seven way on here. And I thought that that might fix the problem. Well, now that I've got a brand new seven way on here, I went to plug it into my trailer brake check, expecting to check the brakes, right? Thinking, Hey, the problem was just on the seven way. So we go ahead and plug it in. And on this, you might see a display right here, red and green. But when I plugged it in earlier, I had no display, but I had a blue light. So that's one of the things that this thing will evaluate for. I, yes, I could do this with my meter, but in one shot, I just found out something. What I found out, the only reason this blue light should be on like it is right now, okay? The only reason this blue light should be on is when the brake is energized, okay? So um, the fact, and, and, and the only time this display should be on is if I have 12 volts in my seven-way connector. So that is to say this box is fed from my seven way. So that is to say, if this was plugged in, if it was wired correctly, and this was plugged into my tow vehicle and my tow vehicle had, was wired so that one of my pins on my seven way on my tow vehicle was 12 volts hot, then it's connected to my battery on the trailer. Now that's an important test because if you have a breakaway situation, we have a breakaway and your trailer should break away from your tow vehicle. You need to have the battery on board your trailer whether it's an RV, a boat, a cargo trailer, whatever, and it's the battery on the cargo trailer that is going to engage the brakes. So the first thing we wanna check for when we're checking these things is, do I have power? If I have power, therefore, the correct pin on my seven way has 12 volts on it. Now the other day, well, uh, earlier today when I did it, I had no display, which tells me that I have no 12 volts on the correct pin, but I had a blue light on this. What does that mean? Well, that means that it, it, I don't know where the 12 volts is, but I do know, I don't know where the brake wire is, but I do know that the 12 volt wire that's connected to my RV, that's connected to the battery was feeding my brakes at all times. So that's one of the things we found out uh, just from plugging this thing in now. We have redone a lot of the wiring inside this RV. It was all wrong. Whoever had worked on this prior to it coming to us uh, had wired it really incorrectly. Now, let me mention something, and I put a sticker on the back of this thing. It, it, you're not gonna be able to see it, but you'll see that there's two standards. There's the SAE standard and the RV standard, okay? So this is the RV standard here, that's the SAE standard. The, the, the pinouts, that is to say that Left blinker is always on the left, right blinker is always on the right, marker lights on the always on the up, 12 volts hot is always on the up, and then the bottom two, one bottom is gonna be break and one bottom is gonna be ground. That stays the same, but the color of the wiring will change depending on the standard. Take a look at that again and you'll see that like for example, marker lights and left turn go from brown to green and or green to brown, okay? So whoever had wired this previously, they wired it to the the traditional standard, not the RV standard. So that's the first thing that this, I was able to look on the back and say, oh, I see what they did, fix that. And that helped a lot, but we still showed that there was a ground fault. And um, when this thing was made, probably in the late seventies or whatever this is, I don't know what vintage this is, but it's either in late seventies, early eighties Airstream. They had taken the brake wire and they'd run it through a metal strap on the axle back here to go to the brakes. And the, thousands of miles that this thing has traveled, the, the jacket of that brake wire had rubbed through exposing one of the conductors or a couple of the conductors, little strands. So it was a very weak short to ground, but it was enough to give me problems. Okay, so we've got all that fixed. Anyway, that's what's going on with this, but here's how this tool helped, okay? So you plug this thing in, okay? Yay, we're plugged in. 
and uh, now we have a display right here. Um, so I'm, I'm reading right now 12, let me bring you guys just a little bit closer and you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, so now we can see, now I'm looking, everything's backwards. Um, what is that, 12? 12, 12.8 and zero. Now, whenever you are going to read DC current, you need to clear your meter and set it to zero, okay? Uh, if you've got your Fluke or your Klein or your Craftsman or whatever, and you're reading DC current, you have to zero your meter. Well, the same goes for this thing. That's a value, okay, but you need to clear it. So I have a button here and you push it for one, two, three seconds and you're gonna get CCC, meaning clear. So now it's been zeroed out, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push up on our spring-loaded button, that thing says hold to read brake current. So I'm gonna spring up on it, and what does that say? 12.3, but look at my voltage. My voltage right now is 12.8, and when I energize my battery, I mean, when I energize my brakes, it goes down to 11. Um, so the RV does not have a battery on it, so I just grabbed, a, obviously, a dead battery out of my storage here and just threw it on there just to give me something to work with. Um, so, but anyway, as the current goes up, the voltage went down, didn't it? You saw that. So over here, I have a legend. I don't know if you guys can make out what this says, but it is a 10 or and 12 inch brake drum. We have two axles and four brakes. So that I should get a value of 13.7 to 15 amps. Okay. So let's see what we have right there. I've got 12.2 but I'm thinking if I had a fresh battery and that was like 12 volts, because these values here are based on 12 volts. So our voltage went down by a whole amp. And so I'm okay for the testing that that's what that did. So if I had a smaller pop-up trailer or a smaller little boat trailer or something like that, then this would be the seven inch drum. These are the 10 and 12 inch drums. So the brake pads change and the values in them change. This little yellow thing down here, what I put on the legend was that's the, the current value and the ohms value for an individual brake pad. And then, so I've got the seven inch and the 10 and 12 inch, okay. So if I needed to check an individual brake pad, which I did have to do on this, because I, when I first did this test, I had the blue light. Okay, so then I fixed that problem. And yes, they had the brake wire and the power, the 12 volt auxiliary power wire, they had those wired backwards. So we got that figured out. And so then when I connected this, I got my display and, and I only got the blue light when I triggered it up. So, so we fixed that problem. But when I triggered it up, I wasn't getting any voltage here. I, well, I was getting like three, okay? So what that tells me that only one of my brake pads was reading out of all four of them. And so then I had to go to each individual individual brake pad and read the, you know, do a test on each individual brake pad. So another thing that I have here, um, this one is still kind of being designed, if you will, but it's just another seven way, but it's a two conductor. And then I took, we have a test lead set that we make that's got banana connectors on the end. And so what I do here is now you plug that into it. Okay, so the seven way is off. Here's a seven way that goes to the whole RV. Now I've got it with just this with little, it's gonna be a banana connector. I've got a stacking banana connector on here, but when I make it, it'll, it'll just be a single banana connector. And then you'll take whatever fitting you want. We have quite a few that we offer for our test lead set. So you could get some of the set of those. Maybe you already have whatever you want, but I use like the big um, alligator type clamps. Anyway, you'll connect it on there. And then with this, with your alligator clips on the end, you can skin back your um, your individual brake pad. Another connector we have for this is a piercing probe, so maybe you wanna use a piercing probe, and that's why I'm gonna make these with little banana connectors on. If you have the test lead set and this, then a lot of the connectors, well, all the connectors are interchangeable on the ends here. That's why I'm gonna go with the stacking banana. Anyway, so um, then you need a, uh, you need to power your box. So then I made a little alligator thing that you can connect to a battery. On the back of this, you've got an SAE2 flat. So you connect that in, giving you a way to connect to the battery, which is what I've got connected to the RV. You connect this to your battery. Now your box is energized, and then you can go and test your individual brake pad. So what I did earlier, I grabbed a battery, just kind of stuck it underneath the RV right in the middle and then used the alligator clips to clamp onto it. And then I dragged this to the four different locations with my alligator clips on this, tapping into each individual brake pad. Turns out that as old as this RV is, those brake pads are coming back perfectly within spec. So if we were to go here, uh, 
I was getting 3.8 and look right there, it says 3.8 on that. So it's almost like these brake pads have never been used. Normally you're gonna get a little bit of wear in them. So I don't know how long this problem's been going on, but this little jewel right here was able to, it did some heavy lifting and it, it shined and made the job a lot easier. So now that we've tested our individual brake pads, we can go back to our um, seven way. Okay, so now we know our brake pads are good. And now we wanna do all of our testing on, our, on all of our brakes. We know we're wired correctly with our 12 volts because the box is powered from the seven way. If it was not, then we could still connect an external battery to it on the SAE2 flat, this thing right here, okay? And um, um, if it turns out that you have power on your seven way, you can still connect this to it uh, from a known good 12, from a known good power source. And if you do that, then this becomes your primary power source and it disables the 12 volt power source in this cable so that they're not fighting each other or bucking. I don't know, in three phase, we talk about bucking phases and stuff like that. So it's not gonna do that. Um, so now that we've got all the wiring fixed, we've checked all of our individual brake pads. Uh, we know we've got good power. We've got 12.8 right here. Then you spring load this up and uh, that's where you get the 12.3. And uh, I th we already mentioned that we're within spec. I'd like that to stay at 12, but it went down a volt because my battery's dead in the back. Um, so let's say it's not exactly right. Then you flip this down, it stays in the down position and now you're gonna go on and off every two seconds. Okay, so we did a video, gosh, a couple years ago that had a two second on off circuit on it. Um, that's what this has become. I put a lot more into it. I think this thing does 10, 15 tests. I don't know, I could probably sit down and figure it out. The one that threw me earlier today <laughs> was when I plugged it in, I had no display, but I had a blue light. I'm like, ah, it found something else that I never even anticipated. So with this blue light triggering on and off um, every two seconds, you can, I put it, I put a light on it so you could see it even when it's on its little feet right here, little rubber feet right there. Um, so what we'll do is I'll set this down so I could see it from underneath. And I've got this trailer pulled up on a ramp so I can get underneath there and do all the wiring repairs. One of the wheels is able to turn. So let's move everybody back there. We'll spin it while this thing's on two seconds on off and we'll, we'll see how this thing works. So let me move everybody to the back. Okay, so I can see my little, it's a very bright blue light. The one that I picked for this was designed to be in a bright sunlight area. So I can very easily see my blue light on and off right from up there. So what I'm gonna do, it's off right, it's on. Okay, so when it turns off, I'm gonna spin this thing. It, it just locked up. Okay, light came on and I can hear it working. It locked up again. So it's off. Okay. So with the wheel up, you can spin it and make sure that your brake is engaging. So um, anyway, it does several other things. So if you're interested in this tool, I guess you could call this my version of a commercial. <laughs> um, it's just that I worked on this RV for, for all day to get this wiring problem figured out. And even their lights were messed up. So we got all that figured out too. And um, so this tool that I made, the, the trailer Tesla, was a big part of figuring this out. And uh, so if you guys are working on trailer problems and wiring and everything, check that thing out. Um, it really saved the day. Could I have done it with a meter? Absolutely. But just being able to plug that thing in and know that it was gonna give me voltage and current at the exact same time, I could have used my meter to have read current and voltage, but I don't know that it would have shown me at the exact same, I would have had to have two meters to show me that my current is is not where it needs to be but it's because my voltage went down so it displays all that and so i'm kind of proud of that it does all those things and um so i'm pretty proud of that tool and um it did a lot of heavy lifting on this job right here and um anyway i wanted to do a video to share with you guys what i made and um invite you to check it out and get one in your hands as well. Uh, if you're interested in that we'll make links down in the description you could check out our myrv works dot com website and we have links on there for the, not only that tool but all the other tools that i make as well so all right guys thanks for your time bye